Is there scientific evidence for God? No, of course there isn't. That's just silly. Every time the religious pretend that there is, they sure can't present any, can they? But that doesn't stop the religious from believing it, does it? Because they're just madly trying to reinterpret reality to fit their views of their imaginary friends. Is that as stupid as it sounds? Yes, yes it is, but let's go look at yet another example. Today, we're going to take a look at reasons to believe, and an attempt to prove that science proves God, but it doesn't work out that way no matter how much they desperately wish that it would. They just want it to be true, so of course that means it has to be true, right? Otherwise, they might just feel bad and they can't have that. Yet, these reasons are always horrible and they fall apart near instantly the second that you have a critical look. Why? because none of them are actually valid. They're just bald rationalizations to get back to the religious fold. And whether they like it or not, that's just dumb. It really is. Does God exist? Can we use scientific discoveries to demonstrate the existence of God? I'm joined today by Dr. Francisco Delgado, who is a Christian and a physician who specializes in infectious disease to help unpack these questions. All right, let's slow down just a little bit. First off, I already know what you're going to try and it's not going to work, except for the gullible idiots in your audience who will believe anything you say. That's not us, so I'm going to point out everything that you're about to do wrong. It's for your own good, trust me, even though I don't think for a second that it'll make a difference to people like you. So let's address the questions at hand. Could science prove God? Well, if God actually existed, science would have a hard time coming to any other conclusion. If God was actually real in the objective reality that we all share, then yes, science would be able to prove God. A real God would be absurdly obvious in any scientific endeavor, which doesn't happen to be the case today. Now, keep in mind, there's a difference between can we rationalize our way to God and can we use science to actually discover God? Because obviously, the first can be done, because it's all the religious do. The second one, though, they're not doing that one so well. So let's keep watching and figure out exactly why. Paco, um, what do you think is the most compelling scientific evidence for God's existence? Yes, you know, people would like to hear, or oh, give me proof that God exists, and I do not think that in, you know, only in mathematics, really, can you talk about proofs. Mm -hmm. We can come with multiple arguments. Yet, every single one of those arguments are fallacious, as we will see. Every single one will make claims, most often entirely unsupported claims, and will then just leap to the unsupported conclusion, well, that's God. No, you're just wrong. Therefore, God isn't an argument. It's a claim, and an unsupported one at that. In order to demonstrate God, you need to actually be able to produce God for study. That's how science works, after all. Just because you can proclaim that God did it, that doesn't mean that God did it. Your claims aren't the proof. Your claims are just assertions. They need to be backed up with objectively verifiable evidence, and you people never have any of that, do you? But of course, the people that you're making these videos for, they know absolutely nothing of science or the scientific method, so they'll just buy into anything that gets them into that emotionally comforting state that they want to be in and reaches the emotionally comforting conclusion that they desperately want to reach. That's why these videos are made for dumb people. 
because they'll fall for anything. That together will bring up a very, very strong case for the existence of a God. There are many arguments, and probably the most powerful ones that we have right now are the cosmological argument mm -hmm. and the fine-tuning argument. I'm sorry, but if that's the best that you can trot out, you're in serious trouble. Both have been soundly debunked, and neither actually gets you to any kind of rationally defensible, demonstrable God. Just because you can declare, therefore God, that doesn't actually mean anything. You could declare, therefore invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies. And it would mean exactly the same thing, that being absolutely nothing. It doesn't get you to any gods, and certainly not to your specific god, and that's what you need to be able to do for us to take you seriously. Nothing less will ever suffice. And it's why they don't actually want to talk to us, because we're just going to point out all the places that they're going ridiculously wrong. This isn't about reaching a reasonable, rational, evidence-based conclusion, though. It's all about stroking their fifis, and that's really kind of pathetic, isn't it? Those, to me, are two of the most powerful uh, ways in which I can show people that there really is a God. Okay, so for those people that are watching this that aren't familiar with those two arguments, could you, in a nutshell, describe what the cosmological argument is, and then, in a nutshell, describe what is the fine-tuning argument? Yeah, but we've done all that before. But, of course, we're going to let the doctor give it his best shot, that's what we're here for, after all, and just see where he comes out. They are not remotely impressive to anyone who actually cares about truth. And I mean real truth, objective truth, not when it makes me happy. If these people were at all credible, they'd have stopped using these ridiculous claims long ago when they were first soundly debunked. But they just don't care, do they? The religious never come up with new arguments because they don't care that any of the ones that they're currently using are just absurdly faulty and fallacious. This isn't about truth. It's never been about truth. It's about conning the rubes out of their hard-earned money and feeling good. But that's not worthwhile. That's just stupid. But anyway, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and see what Francisco has to say. Sure. Well, the cosmological argument goes like this. Uh, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Its second premise says the universe began to exist, and the conclusion is the universe has a cause. God isn't mentioned once at all. Thus, this argument doesn't actually demonstrate a God. A cause doesn't mean God did it. So, you've already failed there. But it goes deeper than that. First off, not everything that begins to exist has a cause, at least not that we can always tell. Quarks seem to pop into and out of existence all the time, with no cause in evidence. So, you're just wrong there. Secondly, who says the universe began to exist? We know that the universe expanded, but it didn't just magically appear out of nothing like the religious light to claim. Go look at any description of the Big Bang. I mean, we can just do a Wikipedia search because it's simple. The model describes how the universe expanded from an initial state of high density and temperature. Great, not nothing, high density and temperature. That's not nothing, people. Figure it out. So far as we can tell, the universe never began. For anything that we can identify as time, the universe has always been here. It has been, in any way that we can detect, eternal. So, in other words... Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, and from science, we've, uh, we have seen the very compelling uh, uh, arguments on how really the universe comes about down to a beginning even if there's a multiverse, essentially. Nope, you haven't. Yes, our particular instantiation of space-time had a beginning, in air quotes, at the Big Bang, but as I already showed, that wasn't a beginning out of nothing. 
It was just a rearrangement of already existing materials compacted into a hyperdense state. The universe had a beginning in the same sense that you had a beginning. That thing that we call you got started when your mother got down to uh, writing St. George. And that doesn't mean that you just poofed into existence out of nothing. You came about from pre-existing materials reshaped into a human form. And that's what the universe did. A snowflake, it just doesn't come out of nowhere. It forms through entirely natural processes from other things. That's why they don't want to talk to us. Because we just laugh and laugh and laugh until we groaned. And they can't have that, can they? They rely on the ignorance of the idiots in the pews. If you don't understand the reality, you're going to fall for just about anything, aren't you? The fine-tuning argument essentially also uses the observations of our universe to see how all of the constants in the universe are so well tuned, to use the same word, so well uh, crafted, designed for us to be here, it's essentially talking to each other at this point. And that's just ego talking. The fine-tuning argument relies on the assumption that we're important, that we just had to be here. Therefore, there has to be a reason why everything looks just like it does so that we could be here. But that's just stupid. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to bring out Douglas Adams again to explain it to us with a puddle analogy. We always ask ourselves why, because we look for intention around us. Because we always intend, we do something with intention. You know, we, um, we boil an egg in order to eat it. Um, so we, we look at the rocks and we look at the trees and we wonder what intention is here, even though it doesn't have intention. So we think, so what did this person who made this world intend it for? And this is the point where you think, well, it fits me very well. You know, the caves and the forests and the stream and the mammoths. He must have made it for me. I mean, there's no other conclusion you can come to. And it's rather like a puddle waking up one morning. I know they don't normally do this, but allow me, I'm a science fiction writer. <laughs> a puddle wakes up one morning and thinks, this is a very interesting world I find myself in. It fits me very neatly. In fact, it fits me so neatly. I mean, really precise, isn't it? <laughs> it must have been made to have me in it. And the sun rises and he's continuing to narrate the story about this hole being made to have him in it. And the sun rises and gradually the puddle is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And by the time the puddle ceases to exist, it's still thinking, it's still trapped in this idea that the, the hole was there for it. And if we think the world is here for us, we will continue to destroy it in the way that we've been destroying it. The problem here is always one of ego, not intellect. We just don't matter. If the conditions in the universe had been different, assuming they could have been any different because we don't actually know that, then whatever would have evolved, if anything ever did, it would have been fit for those different conditions. The universe doesn't look the way that it does because of us. We look the way that we do because of the universe. The entire argument falls apart the second that you realize that they're just yanking this straight out of their assholes. So really what we're saying is that if there's a, a beginning to the universe, there must be a cause, and whatever cause the universe is outside the universe is greater than the universe, and so we could take that concept to be God then. But that doesn't make it your God. Depending on how you define your terms, it doesn't even make it a God at all. If it was some otherworldly scientists, say, just messing around in a lab and they just generated a universe, would that make them gods? See, where they're going wrong is they are assuming purpose in the universe. Why? 
because they really want there to be purpose in the universe. This is all about their feelings and not about any kind of logic, rational, demonstrable facts. What if there was no purpose at all? What if it was all just the operation of nature and it just so happened to turn out this way? What if it was just physics doing what physics does? What then? Well, they don't like that because they desperately want to feel special. But your feelings don't remotely enter into it at all, do they? Only reality does, and so far as we can tell anyhow, there was no intelligent creator for any of it, no matter how bad that might make them feel. Your fee-fees just don't matter. It's time to grow the hell up. That is correct. And you can also extend it to, for example, arguments about, uh, you know, the origin of life. You could also extend it to... Uh, issues about consciousness. Except you really can't. In absolutely no case in the history of everything has any claim that God did it ever been borne out in reality. It always turns out to have a natural cause. Magic doesn't exist. You know who always fights against the natural explanations? The religious, because they just don't like it. The germ theory of disease. Well, it wasn't demons making people sick. It was microbes. It wasn't devils possessing people. It was mental illnesses. The Bible says the sun and the moon were created after the earth. The Bible is wrong. Yet these people, they just don't care, do they? It's why when we start to ask these questions, they just run away. They hide. They proclaim faith answers all questions when it does absolutely nothing of the sort. All we see is that in 100% of the cases where we've been able to rationally evaluate a religious claim, these claims about their imaginary friends turn out to be completely wrong, and there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to think that that's going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, so now as a physician, is there anything about the human body that to you screams design? Everything. From one simple nanomachine that could be in your cell to the whole functioning of a human body. To me, it is just a marvel. Yeah, but you're kind of biased, aren't you? This is how religion works. It makes completely unjustified assertions that can be backed up in any rational way, and then it demands that adherents believe it without question, or they're going to roast for all eternity in the fiery pits of hell. Well, that's not a good way to go through life, is it? That's not a good way to reevaluate reality. You have to believe or you're going to fry. Well, how do you know any of that? They don't, but they have to believe it or else. It's all based on childish threats that bad things will come after you're dead. Conveniently beyond the scope of anyone's ability to check it out and come back to tell us if any of it's actually there. This has been a religious con job since mankind began, and it's not going away now, at least for the people who are still dumb enough to fall for it. Now, is there other evidence that con convinces you that God exists that's outside of science? Well, you could get into the philosophical arguments for the existence of God. And uh, one of the arguments, for example, is the contingency argument that says mm -hmm. essentially that, again, everything goes back to a a contingent being or a contingent agent until you get to a point where there is really nothing behind that. Except that doesn't work either. All of the philosophical arguments fall apart under any kind of rational scrutiny. It's all therefore God territory, but that doesn't actually prove anything because you haven't demonstrated any gods in the first place. It means nothing more than saying magical unicorn farts did it. Make something up, it really doesn't matter. It's all ultimately the same. Just because you really, really, really like an idea, that doesn't make that idea true. Which is why science works the way that it does. It doesn't say, well, we've backed ourselves into a corner, so we're just going to make some shit up so we're happy. Because that's not rationality. It is religion, but that's not rationality. How stupid is that? Uh, that, to me, is also a very compelling argument for the existence of God. Mm -hmm. Then you, my friend, have got some very, very low standards. The problem is, 
all theists do. They're not out there seeking truth. They're looking for emotional comfort. They want their fifi stroked, nothing more. They want to be happy, whether that happiness is based on a rational view of reality or not. Because they don't really care about that, do they? This isn't about truth. It has never been about truth, and it will never be about truth. But I want to be happy. Well, I don't give a damn what you want. Grow the hell up or go the hell away. You're just embarrassing yourself with this ridiculous childish nonsense. These really are immature children just living in adult bodies. It's why their arguments never change, because they refuse to actually think about them in any rational way and reject them when they turn out to be absurd. And they're all absurd. They all are. They just don't care about that. It just gets them where they want to go, whether that's representative of reality or not, because screw reality, reality is scary. This is why discussions never go anywhere, because they're just not interested in coming to a rational view of the truth. If these two idiots were here right now watching this video, of course they wouldn't be because they're terrified of us, but if they were, they wouldn't change their minds because they're not using them to begin with. They just want to believe. And I'm sorry, but that's just dumb. Boom, dicky, 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 boom